July 1st, 2012. Dr. Steve Mann, a University of Toronto professor, is enjoying his summer with his wife and children in Paris, France. They've just spent the day sightseeing at eight different museums and landmarks as part of a boat cruise vacation package, and it's getting late. Wanting to grab a quick bite to eat before heading back to their lodge, the family stops in at this McDonald's, located at 140 Avenue de Champs-Élysées. This being Paris, there's a line. Which, no big deal, everybody's gotta figure out what they wanna order anyway, but the thing about lines is that Steve Mann tends to stand out in them on account of his wearable computer. You see, Steve Mann is equipped with a Generation 4 iTap, a heads-up display unit that acts as a camera and superimposes computer-generated imagery on the scene available to the eye. Steve Mann is a cyborg. Sort of. Since the 1970s, he's experimented with various augmented reality technologies and is known as the father of wearable computing. He holds a PhD in media arts and sciences from MIT, he's worked as the chief scientist at Meta, a Google Glass competitor, and his heads-up display eyeglass has been a staple of his appearance for about four decades. It's permanently attached to his body and does not come off his skull without special tools. So while the strange looks aren't anything new for Steve Mann, his eyeglass is certainly a new sight for the other restaurant patrons, and it doesn't take too long in line before he's approached by a McDonald's employee who proceeds to question him about the device. Since Mann and his family were spending the vacation going to museums and places where police and security guards frequently perform searches and examine carried items, the professor brought along a letter from his doctor regarding his eyeglass and documentation about the device's purpose. After briefly reviewing this paperwork, the McDonald's employee gives the family approval and lets them order. Dr. Mann's daughter, eager to practice her French, orders the family a burger, a mango McFlurry, and two ranch wraps. A few moments later, the family grabs a seat by the building's entrance so they can watch the evening foot traffic along the avenue. Sometime during the meal, a second McDonald's employee, not wishing to be photographed, approaches Dr. Mann and allegedly assaults him, angrily grabbing his eyeglass and attempting to pull it off of his head. Mann's Generation 4 iTap is equipped with an emergency setting. If the device detects that it is being damaged, whether by fall, forced removal, or other circumstances, the buffered pictures captured for augmented processing remain in its memory and fail to be overwritten by new images as the computer vision system stops functioning. It's at this point that Steve Mann's eyeglass, now disturbed, begins capturing images that will remain stored on the device. Mann pulls away from his assailant and attempts to calm him down by showing him his doctor's note and device documentation, explaining again the purpose of his headwear. The assailant, in response, takes Mann to two other individuals who work at the restaurant. This party of three surrounds Mann and begins reviewing the paperwork, deliberating over it for several minutes. Eventually, one of the men crumples the doctor's note and tears it up. Another destroys the other documentation. At this point, Steve Mann looks down at one of the employee's name tags, and the employee quickly covers it up and flips it backwards so that his name is obscured. The employee then grabs the professor, pushes him out of the door, and onto the street. Needless to say, the family's dinner plans are ruined. Shortly after the incident, Professor Mann seeks to rectify the situation by contacting the head of McDonald's customer service to share his experience. For the next two weeks, he makes numerous attempts to talk to the company about the incident, but receives no reply. At this point, Dr. Mann goes online and publishes his account of the alleged assault on his personal website. This touches off a fair amount of controversy from various media outlets and helps to launch a larger conversation about the rules surrounding surveillance in commercial outlets. After all, why is it that McDonald's can enforce a no-cameras policy when they as a company seem entirely comfortable pointing their cameras at you? And how do such rules square with people like Dr. Mann, who use camera technology as an extension of their quality of life? After the story begins to spread around, McDonald's sends out a press release regarding the incident, and after a bit of back and forth in which Dr. Mann shares the images captured by his device, no publicly acknowledged resolution to the incident ever really comes about. For Mann's part, rather than take the matter to court, he partners with the American Civil Liberties Union, an institute of electrical and electronics engineers, to propose the Mann-Wassell Law in New York, an idea that rethinks how governments and corporations approach the subject of surveillance. And after all this, I'm still left wondering about the ramifications of the whole affair. I guess I never really thought about the implications that this subject would have in day-to-day -day life, especially when you consider how imaging technology is now being employed 
and will be employed in the future for visually impaired humans. I mean, ask yourself, will it be appropriate to have a strict no-camera or no-recording policy in a business establishment if, in the future, camera devices will be utilized by people with vision impairments? And how does this all reckon with the increased concern over our right to privacy? As medical advancements are slowly yet surely made, these kinds of conversations and debates will become more and more frequent, and whatever decisions that society ultimately makes about how to regulate or not regulate augmented humans, we ought to pay attention to how we handle early cases like this. After all, it may well be that what happened one night at a McDonald's in 2012 will inform how we handle similar and even greater cases for centuries to come. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Now, for what it's worth, the details of the alleged assault come solely from Dr. Mann's official statement, as McDonald's never publicly shared an in-depth account of the incident from their perspective. Special thanks to this video's sponsor, CuriosityStream, who provide a subscription streaming service of over 2,000 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals that cover subjects in a similar vein to this video. I'm thankful that they are willing to support stories like this, and if you want to watch awesome long-form content that covers the future of science and technology, you can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month. But I want to give you 30 days for free to try it out. You can sign up at curiositystream.com slash Austin McConnell and use the promo code Austin McConnell during the sign up process. This really helps me out as a creator, and in return, you get an awesome collection of documentaries. Win-win, right?